Welcome to Legal Tech Live, episode 68. I'm Nick Rishwain, and I'm here tonight with my co-host, first-time co-host. Hopefully, she'll enjoy it enough to come back in, in the near future, Ivy Gray. Ivy Gray is a friend of mine. She's a legal tech entrepreneur, a well-regarded writer, and a former practicing lawyer. Her work on technology, competence, ethics, and innovation has made her respected, a respected thought leader in the legal tech community, which is the community that we're going to be streaming into tonight. In 2018, Ivy was recognized as a Fast Case 50 honoree and a part of the Women of Legal Tech by the ABA Legal Technology Resource Center. So much of that little description there about Ivy, it really encompasses a lot. And I want you to get to know her a little bit more personally tonight. And our guest tonight is Joe Regalia. Joe is a law professor at UNLV, correct, Joe? Yes. That's yes. right. Okay, law professor and trainer focused on legal writing and legal tech. He loves working with lawyers, judges, law students, and others who want to become excellent writers and users of technology. He regularly speaks and conducts workshops on all sorts of writing and tech topics. He's also told us that he is quirky and people like him for that. And so some gentle ribbing is expected tonight. Very with, welcome. With that, I thank you for being here, Ivy. I thank you, Joe, for being here. Joe, tell us a little bit about your product, Write.Law. That's what you're here to talk about tonight. Tell us a little bit about it. Intro it a little bit because I didn't touch on that yet. Yeah, so Write.Law is a legal training platform um, right now, it's focused mostly on training legal writing, um, and there's a lot of different aspects of it that, that come together, but our goal from the outset has been, you know, to create a place where lawyers um, and law students can go to work on sort of every aspect of their legal writing, um, and really, as we've built it out, every aspect of their practice, all sorts of, of practice skills. Okay. And so how was it created? Tell me a little bit about how it actually came to, was, is it a SaaS product that I can just go and subscribe to online? How does that work? Yeah, so it's going to be kind of probably a similar user experience, at, at least in some ways, to like going on a Khan Academy or something like that. Okay. So um, it's our own platform that you sort of proceed through lessons, um, covering every everything you can imagine um, when it comes to legal writing, using legal tech, oral presentation skills, all, all sorts of stuff. So do you buy a pack of courses or how does that work? So no, the way we have designed it is um, it's going to be a, a subscription service, um, okay. sort of different tiers or different markets and law students, obviously very different discounted versus practicing attorneys. Um, but it's, it's, you know, once you pay the subscription, you're going to have access to just a, a massive library of courses. Um, and each course is broken down. So there's sort of the learning aspect, which, um, and it's the, the teaser video I kind of sent out, highlighted a few of these things. So lots of interactive um, ways that you can actually, you know, interact with pieces of legal writing and see different techniques in action. So there's that learning piece. Um, lots of explainer videos with custom animation and voiceovers, um, and then tons of targeted exercises so that folks can work, you know, discreetly on each each aspect of of their writing. Do the courses adapt to the strengths and weak and weaknesses of the participants, uh, kind of like the GMAT does? Yeah, I mean, so long term, that is definitely we're definitely looking at that functionality. Um, the way, and you know, we, if we have time later to kind of look at a, a sample lesson, it'll, I think it'll become more obvious. Um, it's not structured as like a simple, you know, can you use passive voice, right? I mean, this, this covers, the library covers, you know, some everything from analysis, all aspects of legal reasoning. Um, there's tons of persuasion science, so storytelling skills. Um, it's not, it's not structured as a, you know, memorize this thing and then, you know, recognize it. Okay. So, and, and you said 
Well, let me step back a little bit here. So when did you start working on Write.Law? Let me hear that. Give me a little bit of your startup journey here to, to, to do, because I think you were working on it, as you told me before we got started, that, that there were some iterations prior to where you Oh, were. yes. I mean, this has been, this has been almost a, a lifelong passion. Um, and I guess if you guys don't mind, I will start very early because when I talk to people about, you know, why I'm so excited about this and why I've spent so much of, of my day job and night job um, focusing on this, it, it goes back really all the way when I was a kid. Um, I had some medical issues growing up. I spent a lot of time in hospitals and I was homeschooled. And so reading and writing were kind of my thing. And as I got older, you know, I decided I really want to become a lawyer. And you know, at that point, I was the first person to go to college in my family. And the idea of, you know, being a great writer, much less a great lawyer, seemed so intimidating. And so even back then, before law school or anything else, I was pretty obsessed with trying to figure out how to become better, how to become a good lawyer. Um, but the really pivotal point was when I started teaching law students. Um, the first few years I was teaching, I was, you know, either clerking or practicing in different big law firms. And so, you know, during the day, I was working with these awesome lawyers. At night, I was teaching law students. And I felt like an incredible pressure uh, responsibility to these students. They were relying on me, right? So like, especially with legal writing, that's what I was teaching at the time, to figure out how to become these these a great lawyer and successful lawyer and get jobs and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I knew it by that point, as we all do, that perhaps like the most critical thing they could do to be successful was to become good writers. And so those years where I was sort of in my day job practicing, seeing how important writing was, um, and then teaching at night, sort of coalesced into this say, obsession or mission to figure out how how to get better at your writing practically, how to actually see results and make it much less, I think I had this frustration when I was in school too, um, less subjective, right? I mean, especially practicing, people have this sense of writing like it's this art um, or, you know, it's an innate talent and maybe you'll get better in 20 years. Um, but it's not something that most people approach is like, yeah, I could sit down, I could set aside some time each week and just like work on discrete aspects of it and get better. And then pretty soon my writing could start looking like, you know, the best lawyers out there. Um, so, so what is it that makes legal writing good? How, yes. I, I, this I was the problem. It's, no, that was the whole yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's such an art. And uh, it's yep. kind of like that Supreme Court justice said, you know, like, porn, I know it when I see it. Uh, totally. Good, yep. good legal writing. We know it when we see it, but we can't really describe it. So what's your description? I mean, that's, so that's exactly, I mean, you're totally right um, that that's how we all think about it. And that just frustrated me so much. It frustrated me when I was young and coming into the profession. Like, I had tons of imposter syndrome. Like, how am I going to be a good writer or be a good lawyer? Um, yeah, I haven't even gone to public school. I don't even think I met a lawyer. And, you know, my, for law students, it's the same way they feel. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to make my writing good like everyone else is? Um, and so that was a lot of what I spent years trying to figure out an answer to. And I think I ended up with sort of three, three things I felt like I had to answer to make this happen, right? To make this like, could I actually take someone's writing and make it good? Um, one was what you just said, how do you know which writing techniques work? Um, there's tons of tradition out there. I, I tell lawyers and my students all the time, it's not like judges tell you when your writing's bad, right? Um, I've seen judges, I know a brief emotion is not judges I clerk for, but I have seen judges, I know the writing was not good and they'll be, oh, excellent, excellently written briefs, right? Um, so how do you know? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll skip to that. I said there are three points. I'll skip to that in just a second. The three points I was really focused on. One, what are the techniques that make a good writer? What is good writing? Two, it was assuming that there are writing techniques that we could all learn and we could sort of point out and say, okay, yes, that's, that's good writing. Um, where can you go 
to pick all of that up. Um, I think both for students and myself, it's a little frustrating because you can, you know, pick up a legal writing book and it'll have a couple of really good techniques. Maybe you go to a presentation, a CLE, whatever, you pick up a, good, a couple of good techniques. But it's really difficult if you're intent on becoming a great writer to find a place to just go and, and have all of it laid out for you, right? Have all the different aspects of writing and advocacy written out for you. And then the third piece, and then I'm gonna get to that, I'm sorry, but the third piece was, let's say there's good techniques, Let's say we have them all in one place, right? Like in a list. Um, how, how do you learn it easily and effectively so you can actually start using it? And so that first piece, which is how do we know which discrete legal writing techniques work? Like how do we know which techniques we could start incorporating in our own writing that would like start making you approach that to prove writing? And that was the toughest part of all this. Um, so I spent and I can't just say me, but me and a, and a couple a couple others um, spent four years, three and a half years, four years. And if I wasn't at work um, or with my wife, who's been extremely <laughs> supportive along this journey because I haven't had a lot of free time, at pretty much every other hour, I was working on this massive database. And we've collected now thousands of pieces of legal writing. Um, Every single legal writing book that's ever been written, there's like over 300 now. Um, most of the sort of general writing, you know, good writing books, several hundred of those. Um, all the articles we could find in research on legal writing and persuasion techniques. Um, and then a lot of cognitive science stuff too. So I worked with an industrial organizational psychologist. So I wanted to bring in techniques as much as I could from from science, right? It was backed by, we know now how people process information better and, and how to communicate better. I had this huge treasure trove, and this will add, this huge treasure trove that we're adding to all the time of techniques, right? I mean, you could avoid passive voice, that's everywhere. Um, but now imagine going and finding every other tip or technique out there. There's by now like well over a thousand of them in our, our database. And just um, one second, let me stop you yeah, right yeah, there please. because we've got Leb Borgerson is here tonight. We've got AJ Richman uh, watching. Aaron Levine is here. Colin Levy is saying hi. Ivy, it's you is the quotation <laughs> from Colin. And uh, thank you all for being here. If you have any questions for Joe, please post them in the chat. And sorry please, to cut you off do. there. I did. No, 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 no. So we had this huge database and literally all, all my time, literally all my time um, was doing what I call mining. And it was just going and finding every technique out there from every source you can imagine, putting them in, in this database. And then the question is, okay, you got all of these techniques. And what I think of is pretty much like the universe of techniques out there, mostly focused on writing, but then we've been broadening it up to, you know, presentation skills, using technology, other sort of core skills that the lawyers need. Um, how do you know which ones are good or bad was the next piece. And so it's not, I cannot claim it's like a perfect science, but um, we've used a couple metrics to try to winnow that list down to find sort of the cream at the top. One is crowdsourcing. And so that is if we find a technique that is consistently used by, you know, winning lawyers, lawyers that are extremely well regarded, judges that are extremely well regarded writers, um, legal writing books, expert, right? If there's a technique everyone kind of agrees, this is a really useful, powerful move. Avoiding passive voice is like the most uber simple example. I don't think anyone disagrees for the most part that you shouldn't tend to avoid passive voice or you should prefer that voice unless you have a, a specific reason. Um, so crowdsourcing was a big piece. And then the science, as much as we could bring that in, was a big piece. So when, when there's good research out there about- Yeah, will you tell me more about the cognitive science that went into yeah. this? You keep mentioning yeah. that, and I'm super excited because I love that stuff. So tell us. And everybody, yeah. this is why I brought Ivy on for this conversation, oh. because the amount of legal writing that I've done in the last 15 years, 
non-existent. <laughs> so I really needed somebody with some legal writing knowledge, some chops to come in. Prash, uh, Prashant, thanks for joining. And please answer Ivy's question. Yeah, so for me, it was like, look, it's great to have all these techniques that everyone says work really well. And we can guess that they work really well because maybe all the good lawyers are using them. But at the end of the day, it gets back to the, the judge is never going to tell you you're a bad writer point, right? At the end of the day, it's still hard to tell what's really working. Um, and you can't exactly do like controlled legal writing experiments on all of these techniques. And so that's where a lot of, you know, we try to bring it as much as possible, um, cognitive science, behavioral science. And I've worked with a couple um, psychologists that specialize in this stuff. One is a good friend who's an IO psychologist. So he looks at, you know, workplace psychology. And um, in terms of what that research looks like, so we have this huge database and we're working on trying to make that database public on our website. So you'll be able to see, you know, so far, here are all the um, cognitive research, you know, science research papers we've taken in. Here are all the studies that we've taken in and sort of used to inform both the lessons that we teach and how we teach them. Um, and what's been most exciting for me is, you know, summarizing all of that research. Most of the techniques that most people agree are really good. I think, ten, I think it's fair to say are tended to you know, be supported by the science. But then there are some cool techniques that might, A, not be on people's radar, but the science really supports, or B, some techniques that lots of lawyers use and the science is not super supportive of. All right, give us one that, mm -hmm. uh, that people uh, perpetuate that is total BS, and then give us one that's surprising, uh, surprisingly good. Yeah, um, so one that's, that lawyers use that, that are completely BS. I mean, I guess I could, I could use passive voice as one, right? That like the idea that you should never use passive voice, um, and this is probably one that will resonate with most people. Um, you know, there are plenty of good times to use passive voice. And we've got some research suggesting that, you know, not emphasizing, for example, on who's, who's being the actor can be really helpful, actually. Um, Another thing is, you know, avoiding, and again, this probably sounds pretty obvious, but it's something a lot of lawyers do, especially in our database of documents. Um, and that is avoiding, or no, characterizing. So characterizing is a huge one. So that is, you know, when instead of saying that you know, the plaintiff was severely injured, that's a characterization. Who says it's severely? Um, using characterizers like that tend to trigger like really skeptical thinking. It's, oh my gosh, if there's something that we see in more, even top level legal writing, it's characterizations all over the place about all different sorts of things. Um, and there's very strong research that suggests by characterizing even something that you may not think is a big deal, um, you can make your reader more skeptical, right? They just, there's a sense of wanting to argue with you. Who says that's severe? Who says that's a lot? Who says whatever? And it's so easy to avoid that. Um, a surprising, and there's, there's a cool list of surprising ones, and we're trying to make a special list of those just because we think it's kind of fun. Um, but so, for example, leading with the most important point in a brief, which I've heard many, many times, um, but, and, it, you know, with all of these things, it's not an exact science, and there's, you know, judgment calls you have to make. But there's a lot of science that supports you're better off starting with winning arguments, and build and viewing the relationship with your reader as more like a personal relationship and an emotional relationship, getting someone to believe your credibility. And it's kind of like the deposition technique of getting people to say yes, right? And so that it might be more important to create that connection with them than it is to sort of tackle that big elephant in the room um, issue right at the outset. So that's, that's one example. I have to say that Lori Gonzalez is here and she's very happy to see Ivy and she says that I have- You are popular. Well, just hold right there, Joe, because she says <laughs> I have a new twin. So uh, oh, you, you, my friend, are also pretty popular tonight. Thanks for being here, Lori. Any questions for Joe, please join and uh, ask your questions. Thanks for watching. Uh, so- For the record, I just have to throw in here. I grew this beard specifically for this interview tonight. <laughs>
<laughs> and you two know I put on these. I was wearing different glasses. I this is true. This is true. Ensemble. We did. He was actually he was wearing a white shirt earlier, and we made him change so that he looked more like Nick. This is actually. the closest I had. <laughs> this is what happens when people know that you're dripping with success, folks. This is how it happens. So, Joe, I'm and now sorry. I'm gonna to look like this all the time. <laughs> Wherever I go, it's gonna be like that's the Nick look. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> It's going to open so many doors, Joe, so many doors. So I'm sorry, Definitely. Joe, but tell me now, uh, just it, it, there was a lot in there, a lot to unpack, but we've only got a certain amount of time tonight, about, about an hour, 45 minutes or an hour. So what does write.law do? I'm a law yeah. student. I'm going to use it. Take me from there. So let me fast forward beyond the techniques, right? Because right. We could talk about that all night. All I would night. love to talk about all that because that's been like my life for years. But fast forward to that last piece of, you know, the sort of three pain points I'd identified years ago, which is how do you take all these techniques and make them easy to learn and effective to learn? Lawyers are super busy. Um, they don't have a lot of time to spend on, on skills training and things like that. Um, and so how do you build it? So did a lot of work. Um, with educational science, and luckily we have some great technology tools now. And so it was like, you know, we knew that the lessons had to be broken down very discreetly, um, right? So not, oh, you know, write more concisely or whatever, but what, what are the iterative steps that you, that you can do to write more concisely, let's say, or, um, you know, to put together a certain type of sentence or what have you. So it had to be step by step and broken down as discreetly as possible uh, I compare it sometimes, I picked up the violin as an adult, and I kind of compare it to that, uh, which is an extremely hard instrument to pick up. Yeah. Myself. I still sound very bad, as everyone who knows me can tell you. Um, but it's the same thing, right? You take these little tiny baby steps in learning the violin. It's not like you just get up there and start playing. Um, and you practice those steps over and over and over again. And then a couple weeks later, it sounds like something. Um, and that's very much our approach here, right? It's not give you these abstract principles just to kind of wax on about. It's what are these very discrete, we call them moves. What are these very discrete techniques that you can just drill quickly and easily, set aside a little bit of time each day, and then see real results. Um, and so in terms of what the actual lessons look like, and again, you can see some of this in the, in the teaser video, we've structured we spent a lot of time thinking about how we structure these lessons and the practice. Um, again, to be very short and to the point, mm -hmm. um, to break every move down step by step, and then to, lots of real life examples. So every single technique that we teach has probably at least five or six examples pulled from real legal documents and legal, real legal writing. Um, and then tons of interaction. I mean, it's been, it's so important for us and we know this from the educational science. Reading a book, sitting and listening, I want to say this is a law professor, right? Sitting and listening to a lecture, we, we know they're not super effective. They're at least right. not the most effective. And so um, a big part of what we've done on the tech side is just building the interactivity, right? So we've, for each lesson, there's ways for the user to interact with the writing, either by clicking in different places in the document and seeing feedback or comments or being able to fill in parts of the document and get feedback, that interactivity is, is super important to us. Um, and so you'll see the structure of every lesson is kind of laid out the same way, which is yeah. you learn it and those are animated explainer videos we spend a lot of time on but are, are very short and compact. Um, and there's a lot of interactivity built in there, again, get to explore the, the technique and real legal documents. And then a see it in action phase. And that is where we literally you know, take a piece of legal writing that's been filed somewhere and we show you that technique in someone's real writing and we walk through it together. Um, and then the last piece is the mastery part. So the idea is you know, you've learned the concepts step by step discreetly so that you can drill it. Um, you've seen it in action in real legal writing. So that's like concrete for you. And then the last piece is how do you now start drilling it in your own writing? So that last piece, you know, we build that exercise for each technique. So you'll get a little piece of writing to either edit or interact with and start and start drilling those techniques into your, into your writing. 
Ivy, how would you feel about seeing a little uh, example of this? Joe, I can we do to see it. like a five minute example here? I don't want to. Let's do it. Do you have a uh, screen share capability there on your end? Yep. Perfect. You got it? Got it. Cool. Yeah. So every, uh, we, we organize all the techniques by theme. And so, you know, we've got all these hundreds of techniques that we're building out. And we put them into what we call move sets because we call the techniques moves. So you see, this is like the storytelling move set. And here are all of the different techniques, right? The meet and greet, playing movies, the style, movie trailer, all of this stuff. And then for each technique, the same structure. Learn it, see it in action. Recap is just a quick quiz to just make sure you remember the concepts. And then how do we now actually start practicing it, mastering it? And so I'll just and those are the four steps for those are the four steps okay yep. learn uh, it uh, i just want to repeat that for everybody here it's learn it in a, see it in action recap it and then master it yep exactly so the learn it piece always again has the same structure it starts with um explainer videos so mm -hmm. the first explainer video is just going to introduce you at a high level so this is just to sort of get you oriented what is the general area of your writing or your practice that we're talking about? Um, again, always is going to have an example there of kind of introducing you to this move using a real example. After that high level um, explainer, we start to now dive into the concepts step by step. And so there's always going to be a place where people can kind of take a break from the explainer videos and just explore the discrete steps on their own. We keep it, again, extremely simple. These lessons are meant to be completed in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, Cause we know that probably all someone may have, you know, time to devote um, in a day to work on this stuff. And so you kind of explore the steps on your own pace. And then you dive into more, uh, another explainer video that's now gonna take step by step and walk you through each of those steps, how to actually do them in your writing. And again, each, each step is gonna have these concrete examples, and it's all voiceover, kind of explaining to you, okay, this is how you do this step, this is how you do the next step. Um, and then, and I'm actually going to do this one because I was just working on it today. And then each learn it will um, go into some interactive, interactive lessons. And this is where you get to interact with a piece of legal writing, which again is, is so important to us. So here, this technique, um, is a pretty straightforward one. It was meant to look at how do we cut details from our fact sections that aren't doing anything for us or aren't helping us. And, you know, you learn in the steps to avoid things like, you know, dates or times or amounts or names of places or things that aren't driving either your arguments or the story you're trying to tell. And so when we get to this interactive part of the learning, um, there's, you know, there are different types of interactivity, but mm -hmm. this is where you, the user is going to get to interact more with, with the moves and the techniques. So in this example, you sort of read this example, and then um, you're told to hover over the details that might be noise, that might be extraneous. And so as, you know, you have to go through and sort of say, okay, what do I think here maybe is worth cutting out? And then as you get to something and hover it, it'll pop up with, you know, some ideas or feedback or whatever, right? Okay. So, so the date, the date that the bankruptcy was filed may, may or may not be uh, that important in this matter. Is that what you're telling me here? Yeah, so that would be that example. It would be, look, at least think about is the date that it was filed, maybe it's a statute of, of limitations or something, it would sure. matter, right? But if not, right. maybe opt for more narrative works. But even then we'll move through things like the name of the application. Maybe that matters, but probably not, right? I mean, does for this purpose, for this motion, for this brief, do you need to tell your reader what the name of the, the application is? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Um, and so again, you're going to go through and you're just going to try to find sort of each. Do you need to know this, this name of this trustee? Mm -hmm. the name of the trustee matter? Probably not. If the person uh, hovers over something that is relevant, do they get a notice or what do they get? For this, for this interactive lesson, no. This is just okay. really, it's trying to just focus, again, that discrete move of cutting the stuff that doesn't. Um, other moves are about sort of how we pick the things that do matter, do move the story forward, and then the interaction we built for that. So what happens when you click see the rewrite? And then when you click everything that, that we do with the interaction, there's always rewrites of everything, right? Because that's so important. Be able to interact, mess with it, whatever, and then get to see 
model rewrites of, of everything we do. So it looks like you eliminated facts that, that weren't necessary for telling the story, yep. essentially. Exactly. And then once we get through that, so that sort of ends the learning phase. Um, after the learning phase, we go to the see it in action phase. And so here's an example. Let me turn on my annoying voice. Um, so you've learned it now. Let's see that technique in a piece of real legal writing. Let's see what it looks like in the real world, not in a little tiny snippet, but in a real in a real document. And so then you're going to be walked through every single technique. You're going to be walked through a real piece of legal writing. Um, and if it's not legal writing, right, it's whatever the equivalent is. Um, if it's presentation, it would be a real oral argument, whatever. And then after the scene in action, again, this is meant to sort of point out whatever techniques or steps you just learned. We would go to a short quiz. And the point of the quiz is not to like, because it's really hard to like learn a technique in a quiz. We do include this though, because educational science, it, it shows it can be helpful just to sort of refresh after you've learned all of this and seen it in action. It's helpful to just have a quick refresher on what the moves were, the important points. Um, and as you click through this, right, you'd get, you'd see, you'd see um, feedback on each answer. And then the final piece is these, um, is mastery. So these are more intense exercises. Okay. It's not just, you know, hovering over something or clicking through a document. This is where you actually now have to try to use um, the technique or the move to do some writing. Now, if somebody likes this but feels that they are still a little fuzzy on it, can they repeat the section or is there more that they can learn? Yes, absolutely. So um, if, if they just want to sort of revisit, again, the way, you know, the way we structure this is very easy. If they just want to like go watch the videos again or whatever, you can easily navigate to that and click through it. Um, we're actually working right now on creating an audio player for all of the lessons. So if maybe you've gone through them all, but you just want to be refreshed a couple months later, you could just listen to you know, in the gym or in the core, um, the lessons. And then in terms oh, of- Oh, I'm the, definitely going to the gym and listening to legal writing. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> who wouldn't? Um, and then when it comes to the exercises, yeah, I mean, look, this is a huge, a huge part of it. Just as important as learning stuff, it's, it's practicing it. Right. Um, and so for each move, you'll have this intense exercise, but then a core core of our right dot wall online is there's a whole other section of the platform that's just exercises that are just right. So you can come back and keep honing that move and then exercises that combine multiple moves from a, a, a theme, right? So let's say you made it through all the storytelling techniques and you know, now you want to come back and practice, which obviously, you know, we encourage, and that's a lot of, of this, of the platform. You can come back and do exercises that'll have you, you know, use multiple techniques and moves together, bring them together. So a quick, very important question. Please, yes. Can you get CLE credit for this? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> so it's funny that you say that. Um, my co-founder, which, you know, nothing, none of this would have been possible if, if we're not having an amazing co-founder. Um, Jory is working on that right now as we speak. Um, it's, you know, because this is not a huge built out space, this sort of platform and this sort of approach, um, there's not a whole lot of precedent in all of the state bars for this sort of thing. I think most people are more used to a CLE video or what have you. Um, but absolutely our goal and i see no reason that that um a ramp launch or shortly after we're not gonna be able to offer CME. we've got a couple of questions from oh, from the uh, crowd here unicorn uh former guest of the show uh is asking a, a somewhat self-serving question i think unicorn <laughs> and, and i approve okay. Do you have a repository of reference documents for a specific practice area, like in a specific type of document being filed for, I think what they were getting at was the in action part where you could see an actual document. Yes, so that is definitely, um, I had mentioned before, we're working on sort of that resource repository. That is actually absolutely one of the, the things we're building out, right? We have all of this incredible legal writing um, broken down, yes, by practice area and type of motion and brief. 
And so that's absolutely something we're working on. Excellent. And uh, it's so always growing, right? We're bringing, I mean, we bring in new pieces of documents and new science every, every day. Almost. So will that resource repository be available to everyone or so building my own two pieces of legal writing, legal tech, I know that one of the hardest parts is finding test documents to run my to run my programs on and make sure they actually work and find what I think they're going to find. So will you make that available? Will you partner with other legal tech companies, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, obviously you can at all. Um, <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> you know, I, I think our plan is to make it available to everyone. That's not, um, I mean, that's not something we're trying to like monetize. Um, so as far as I know, I think we're going to make it Excellent. And we have a question from Lori. Are you considering building in a grading, a grading portion for the practice models? Uh, you know, she says lawyers love getting graded. I disagree, Lori. <laughs> I, I also disagree. <laughs> I, I disagree with that. I did not enjoy that aspect of it. Um, but I do That's think that I would want, I do think I'd want to know it, it would be nice to see what my progression is, uh, yes. in my writing progression. So grades are not in the plan. Um, probably, I mean, not that we haven't thought about it or talked about it. Um, more just a function of, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think also I want to see how much we suck along our path. But, um, and, you know, given that this really is supposed to be something that you could sit down for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, do a lesson, get something concrete out of it, and move on. Um, that, well, that said, we have absolutely designed the platform so that you can track your progression through the techniques and all the exercises, and, you know, you can get certificates. So if we're partnering with different, um, you know, a law school or a firm or whatever, we can create special counsel, you get a certificate sale, like I finished the, the storytelling course, or I finished the, you know, nuts and bolts legal writing course, um, and you can track your progression as well. So where do you fit in the legal tech, legal writing universe? I am thinking of these different training uh, companies. So there's Practio, there's Core Grammar for Lawyers, uh, you know, there's Write.Law, which are the companies really trying to improve how you write. And then there are the document polishing and creation yeah. uh, tools. Where do, where do you fit in that whole universe? Well, certainly don't fit in the document creation side um, in the sense of, right, it's all, this, we're all about education and training. Um, and in terms of like existing training platforms, you know, to be, to be self-serving about it, I don't know if there's an easy comparison. Um, you know, companies like Hotshot, for an example, that are that are preparing, um, putting out their e-learning videos. That's that's you know got some overlap with what we're doing. But our goal really was, and it is, not to just be you know a repository of videos for you to sort of just go and like go through all these videos and, and watch the videos, but to really make this more of a a, a gym, right? That you could go and sort of hone each aspect of your writing and practice. Um, but on that spectrum, I guess, you know, education and training, you know, CLE webinars, that sort of, I mean, I think we're in that space and trying to do something a little so bit. So if you were reaching out to people at firms, you would want to hear from the, say, professional development people? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's where this would all fit in. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. We only have a few minutes left here. I mean, we can go as long as we want, but I don't want to keep everybody all night. Uh, tell us a little bit about that aspect. Is this, is it launched? Are you trying to get into firms? Tell us about the business side a little bit. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, this has been a huge um, undertaking for me and the, the team that works with me, which is made up in part by my wife and my, my co-founder's wife. Um, who everyone has sort of been on board with this for a long time. It's gone through many iterations in, in the sort of testing and build out phase over years at this point. Um, and so we've done prior iterations, we have beta tested pretty widely um, with a number of law schools, with firms, um, with other orgs. And we've just, none of that's been 
um, a subscription or pay model. It's all been part of sort of our iterative process of getting to this um, this platform and and how we deliver the content and all that kind of stuff. And so that's just been really years of taking the feedback and iteration. Um, our launch of or subscription service um, is the end of January currently slated. And so yeah, we're not we're not out there yet. Um, yeah. Sign you up, but we will we will be in the spring. And what's the go to market plan? What's the go to market plan? Um, you don't have to give me all the details. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fair. Is there are who are you targeting the law student? Do you want to go to the law students first, or are you looking to get out to uh, uh, solos and smalls enterprise level? What's the yeah. what's that like? So our focus at launch will be on on law firms. Um, and other legal orgs um, and courts. We've been talking to courts as well um, about their, you know, clerk, new clerk training and even the, the judge training. Uh, but on the law firm side, which will be our, our, primary, our primary market at launch and, you know, what we've already been starting to do some work with, we're really focusing on both, um, on the sort of bigger, you know, bigger law firm size um, clients. You know, this this is a pretty simple, intuitive, we think, tool for them to just make available to all of their associates, especially their young associates, summer associates. Um, but on the solo and small firm side, you know, a lot of those firms don't have the resources to do a whole lot of training on their own. Mm -hmm. And they can't always afford, and I, I do a lot of workshop training, and frankly, they just can't afford to go um, to, these, to these CLEs. They have to just hope, you know, some free CLE or discounted CLE comes comes to them and then they're sitting through whatever. Um, so we, we definitely think that this will be helpful for them too. Um, it's also, you know, it's also gonna be extremely affordable relative to any other option, I think it's fair to say, um, for getting this sort of training. So and I do, if I just add, sorry, I mean, real quick. We or though, you asked about law students and, and others, um, you know, we or building out more content for different audiences. Foreign lawyers, law students. Um, I'm also very excited about building out a component for pro se folks, um, which would probably honestly be like more of a charity arm of, of something I'm extremely passionate about. And that is training a lot of these skills to, to folks that can't afford their own representation. Um, and so we have those more targeted projects also in the works. Sorry, Emmy. Oh, no, no worries. Uh Transactional or litigation or both? Do you have a sub focus? Yeah, nope. So at launch, um, most of our content will be more, more um, focused on sort of traditional legal writing, which would be mostly litigation, but also plenty of sort of you know email and general communication stuff that would kind of apply to anyone. Um, but the content that we've already have sort of slated and are working on post-launch. Um, covers transactional, um, again, building out stuff for, for foreign lawyers because there's a whole lot of need there. I've worked with plenty of foreign lawyers in the past. Um, so we're definitely focusing on all of those subsets. Excellent. And give us some pricing for those of us who, well, I don't have to do any legal writing, but it, it certainly looks like, especially on the, uh, uh, some of the, fact patterns uh, identifying the the most uh, necessary facts and things like that could improve just about anybody's writing what would the pricing totally. be what are what are your are there it's a uh, subscription based uh, i believe you said and yeah. are there what are the levels do you have any idea on the pricing at this point i mean i can so i can give you some insight into that um my co-founder would kill me if i went into the details because that's more sure. that's more to... his side of things but um, at launch, our sort of standard subscription that any lawyer could buy um, is $15 a month. Okay. And so beyond that, you know, steep discounts for, for law schools and, and we're still working on how that would look because especially given my position, I mean, my interest really is supporting and helping law schools sure. um, more than anything. And, um, and then, you know, steep discounts for enterprise accounts and all of that kind of stuff. Right. Because you're going to need multi-users and things like that on on an enterprise, at law school oh, or enterprise level, yeah. And and yeah, and obviously, 
it, it's steeply discounted when, when, when it's enterprise. So will it be a monthly commitment or an annual commitment, but price monthly, or how will that work? Do you have at that information launch, yet? Just, it, At launch, it's just a monthly commitment. Yeah. Okay. I like that because then they can work through whatever they need to work through for a month. If they need to put it on pause because they haven't gotten to it for a while. A hundred percent. Avoid some of the, I know I'm experiencing subscription fatigue these days. I imagine yeah. others are too. Uh, so I think they're, I think doing the month to month is a smart choice. And, you know, I mean, I come at this from just an incredible amount of passion to actually see it work and to see results. Um, and it's my philosophy. I mean, if, if people aren't using it or getting something out of it, then the last thing I want them is to be paying a subscription. So will you have any pre-sales or pre-commits before you actually launch? Um, that I'm not sure about. So we are doing a final, very short beta period um, in the middle of July leading up to the launch. Um, and I think that there will be an opportunity during that phase to sort of sign up early and get a discount. Actually, I think right we already have a 25% discount for people to sign up for right now. Um, I don't know. Where if can we get your beta information? That's the perfect way to close up. It's getting so <laughs> close. It. So the address, I think I linked in my comment on the Facebook group. But, but we need to is, hear it in audio as well. <laughs> It is, um, if you just go to write.law and click on courses at the top, you can just pop in your email address right there and um, we'll, we'll be reaching out about both beta and you already get that 25% discount. So. And the website is write, that's W-R-I-T-E dot law, yeah. which, is, which is really, uh, we've got, uh, yes, Lori, uh, link will be, right here in the comments for you, right.law. And Unicorn saying lo they love the idea of right.law. Would be great to connect and explore collaboration. Oh, look at that. Unicorn, Always. Unicorn trying to get in on the action. Who doesn't and, like collaboration though? Yeah, and, and so how can people get in touch with you, Joe? How do they get in touch with you directly? I mean, right.law is easy. There's, you know, my contact information's on there. Um, and it's Joe at right.law. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Joe at right.law. And the name is Joe Regalia. Is that right? Am I saying it correctly? Or is it? Yeah. And so right.law, that's the guest tonight. Joe Regalia of right.law. Ivy, where do people get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you? This, I need to write this. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, well, and we can do some of that afterwards too, but how do they get in touch with you? Well, I'm all over Twitter and you can email me at IVG at wordrake.com. That's great. And is there anything you'd like to say about wordrake while we're here? I would like to give you credit because uh, give them credit as well. Wasn't there a recent announcement? Oh, which one? Oh, about my new title, that one? Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, yes, so I am now the VP of Strategy and Business Development. Woohoo! Very exciting, very <laughs> exciting. And that's wordrake.com, W O R D R A K E.com. Correct. It helps you to write clearly and concisely with the click of one button. It's very, it's very sexy. I've seen it and it's very cool. The video, I love the video. You know that I pushed that video. Uh, I, I, I brought it up front based on your loving the video. Yeah, and it, it, it's now everywhere. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> and, and Joe, I think uh, you, you seem to be leading with video uh, because you know that it, oh, it really sells. It, it really helps people focus their attention. It, it does, especially... Um, I hate to be like generational, but especially younger generations. And I say that as a millennial, um, it, it makes a big difference. It does. And Lori mentions one last thing here. She says uh, she might have a law school who might want to try this out too. So great, Lori cool, Gonzalez. very cool. Yeah. And uh, Lori is a great person to know. Uh, you definitely is. want to follow up with her. Find her, stalk her, love her. Lori, so. yes. <laughs> And she right. thinks it's an awesome product. And uh, so I want to thank my guest tonight, Ivy B. Gray. That's Ivy G at wordrake.com. Thank you, Ivy, for saying yes and doing a show with me. 
Very thank happy you. to have you. Thank you, Ivy. And thank you, Joe Pleasure. Regalia from right.law. Very happy to have you on the show. Thanks for getting in touch. This is a topic that I hadn't covered before. I had not covered legal writing, so I thank you both for doing this. And that's it for us tonight, everybody. Thanks for watching in the Facebook group. Lori Gonzalez, Prashant uh, Shinoy from Unicorp. Uh, who else did we have here? AJ Richmond, Mitch Jackson, Aaron Levine. Uh, great, great group. Colin, thank you for being here. So thank you everybody for being here. We will be off next week. That's Thanksgiving, but we will be back the following week with episode 69. We will be returning with Tunji Williams, formerly of Deal Whip. He will be back to tell us about putting the show on pause and it should be, or putting Deal Whip on pause and uh, should be very informative. I uh, love it when a guest is willing to come back and tell us what happened, what it was like, and, and where they're at now. So he's okay. now with Latera Microsystems. Stay tuned for that. That'll be on December 5th. Thank you all and have a good night. Bye-bye, everybody.